Ron Kreider here. We're going to take you on a tour today of the 171210 Multicultural Transmitter Plant located near Miami Springs, Florida. Let's start out first with the outside area here. This is the uh, transmitter building. Doesn't look very nice, but it is very well built. Could use a little paint, and the grounds could be a little bit better kept. But because of COVID, things kind of slowed down out there. But the building is in excellent condition. So we're going to move over here and take a look at one of the towers. All of the towers are about 150 feet tall. This one is top loaded, as you can see, the wire going around the top of the guy wires. And we look over here. Here's a, a quick shot of a a uh, C-band satellite dish. They have a nice generator here, 125 kW diesel generator. Uh, it runs okay. It's an older generator, but it still functions quite well and powers the entire transmitter plant for both of the radio stations. As you can see, they have a lot of spare parts here. I'm going to jump in here and do a walking video right now of the project and you'll take a look uh, this is Les Haber sitting here uh, checking in on his emails but look over here in the background those are all spare parts for all the components here at the transmitter plant well put together well built transmitter plant first uh, three racks you see here on the left hand side are audio processing uh, remote control they get the, their audio via an access unit for one of the radio stations over the internet of course and uh, the other stations get some audio by way of barracks boxes, barracks 500 boxes. There's also a special box that uh, Oscar has installed that uh, keeps track of all the IP addresses and switches over. They have two different internet connections. They have one from AT&T and uh, one from... Um, Hughes uh, Net, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there, up there is the uh, phaser uh, phase uh, monitor that they take out into the field. A uh, lot of spare parts here. Here's are all the instruction manuals that you can see down here. Tons of spare parts. Some of these things are not functioning, but some of the boards in those units are still usable for the audio processing for the Optimod units. Now we're going to go back and take a look at the racks again. As you can see the Optimod audio processor there, the Bell R monitors for each of the stations up top for the modulation monitors. Over here in this, this blue panel is the uh, antenna switching system for the phasing unit. Down there is the uh, access unit, Comrex access unit that's getting the audio here to the transmitter site. And there is the Potomac Digital Phase Monitor on the left-hand side. Here is the DX10 transmitter. We'll go over in the far right side. There is a DX50. So we the camera will move over here just a little bit further, and you'll see that DX50 there. Transmitter seems to be in really good shape. In fact, all of the transmitters are in excellent condition. We say they're in great shape for the shape they're in because some of them are as old as 20 years old when this video was being made. Here you can see that it's operating at 50 kilowatts on the, on the DX50. They appear to be well maintained. Oscar seems to be doing a pretty good job. When this video was made, he had been here for about four years. They have lots of components to help clean things. There's an air compressor. I'm going to go over here and take a look at the, there's a, another cleaning device. And, and here are some spare components, uh, such as uh, capacitors for the phaser and for the transmitter. And as you can see, this wasn't staged for a video. It's exactly the way we found it when we got there. A little cleaning up would be in order, but other than that, it looks like it's in really good shape. I'm very impressed with all of the components that they have here. They have a, 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 over 20 years of uh, collection. They've collected a lot of really good things here. I'm going to cruise over here and take a look at the uh, name plates on the back of these transmitters. This is on the back of the 50. I have some still shots of them showing up. It'll give you the serial number of each one of the transmitters and when they were manufactured. Coming up here is going to be the 10KW, the DX10. And uh, this was, uh, there it is. You can take a look at that. And then as I say, there's going to be some still pictures of these. This was in 1997 that transmitter was built. But it looks good and it works good. The, the, these DX series transmitters were very good transmitters when they first came out. 
And now we're at the back of the uh, audio processing rack in the remote control area. This is where the uh, controls are for the antenna switching units and the phasing monitor there. And most of the stuff is fairly neat. This is what you would generally see. I gave it a C plus rating. I couldn't give it an A or a B because it, obviously it's not brand new. But for what it is, it's in excellent condition. Again, here I'm going to pan across here and take a look at these components. These are all little boxes of uh, chips and all sorts of things for the transmitter. Uh, it's uh, probably not cataloged very well, but nonetheless, it's still there. And if you need it, it's probably there somewhere, which is quite good. One more shot of the, uh, uh, the diesel generator. It's a 125 kW diesel generator. Look at those big coils there in the, uh, on the shelves. This is uh, kind of in the back room where a lot of equipment is stored that they're not using at the, at the moment. Now, as we move across here, we're going to go over and take a look at the power panel. There's a the transfer panel, the big red panel, and there's a 600 amp main power switch down there on the right-hand side. Now we're going to go into some of the, some of the still shots here. Uh, this shows a new air conditioning system that was installed. This is a five-ton unit, and uh, seems to the room was kept at pretty much at 72 degrees all the time. We're going to go down here and take a look at the uh, DX10 still picture of the DX10. This was the main transmitter for 1700. And it was uh, installed in 1997, or actually built in 1997. But as I say. It looks to be in very good condition. And we're going to move over here and take a look at the DX10 control panel, and you can see that it's putting out its appropriate power. And then we're going to take another look at the nameplate. This is a little bit better close-up of the nameplate with all the appropriate information for that transmitter. And then we're going to move in and take a look at the backup transmitters that they have. Each of the stations have their own designated backup transmitters. Uh, this is called the DAX-6. This is a 2010 transmitter. This is the backup for 1700. So they probably use this transmitter at nighttime when they go down to one kilowatt. And coming up here will be the name panel for that transmitter. There you go. And that'll show you that that uh, transmitter, I believe, was... Uh, I don't know when that transmitter was built. It'll tell you on the panel. You can see it better. I can't see it on the small screen here. And this is a Gates 5. That's a backup transmitter for 1210. That's a 2000, uh, built in around 2000. Nice transmitter. Seems to work pretty well. Not one of my favorite transmitters, but it does work, and they do use it at nighttime for their backup system. And then next, we'll go over here and take a big look at the big transmitter, which is the Harris uh, DX50, and there it is, and it's all at splendor. You can see the way all everything was put together on the top, quite nicely installed, very professionally installed. Everything was very professionally installed at this site. Transmitter was sitting right on 50 kW. If I could suggest anything to put into the site to make it better, it would be uh, better audio processors. Obviously, these audio processors are fairly old. And even though they work, the newer ones would make the station much louder and clearer. And there's the nameplate for the DX50, 50KW uh, AM transmitter. And the phaser is in immaculate condition. This is the phaser for the towers at the site. And there are only three towers involved in the directional array for the 1210 radio station. 1700 is non-directional. 1700 is non-directional at 10,000 watts day and 1,000 watts night. That's Oscar standing there uh, by the phaser. Another shot of the phasing system. It's a Kentronics phasing system. You know, there's not too many components in there except the relays and, and coils. Coils generally don't go bad. There's a couple of capacitors in there and then, of course, some uh, of relays. We're going to go over here and take a look at the audio processing rack. Still pictures of those. And there is the remote control, the audio processing. And as I said, the audio arrives here at the site either via... All, all by internet, of course, by either uh, Comrax Access for one of the stations or by the Barracks 500 boxes. And Oscar prefers the 500, the, excuse me, he prefers the Comrax coming in over the uh, Barracks. Uh, but nonetheless, there's a Barracks uh, main and a Barracks backup uh, audio system coming in there. You saw in the video the back of the racks were pretty neatly put together as well. And he has a couple of cameras installed here that he can take a look at what's going on inside the site 
which is really nice, a nice little feature that he's installed lately. And that once again, that's the rack for the controlling the towers uh, that controls the phasing unit. And then we go over here just a little bit further and let's, uh, well, we go over here a little bit further and you get a picture of uh, Oscar and myself. Oscar has been in this country for a number of years. He comes from Colombia and uh, he's a good engineer, uh, a good find and a good guy to keep the, the site uh, operating. It's a picture of me, obviously, there on the left. And this was all put together on January the 3rd. 2022 and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you liked the video give us a like but this is the transmitter plant for uh, 1210 in Miami and 1700 in Miami thank you very much for watching and I hope that this was of some value to you have a really great day this is Ron Kreider